Hi everyone, we are back. We are going to talk about this denim jacket that you've seen pictures of. Can you see the whole thing? Okay. And um, this was just something I did. I just made it up as I went. So when you embellish a denim jacket, you know, don't, don't feel um, restricted by what I did or someone else did. Just go with with what looks good to you and you can use this for guidelines and ideas of course and you can certainly do it just like this but feel free to do what you want whatever you end up doing will be beautiful I know it will be so this is just a guideline so next jacket I'll think of something different and do something totally you know maybe not even close to what this is so that's the fun of it. You do something different every time. And each person does something different from the other person. So, so uh, don't be afraid. Just, just start on it and it will come to you. All right, so I'm going to show you what I stitched on this jacket so that you can at least know that if you do want to copy this one. So this is the uh, Elegance Linen Moth that I put on the sleeve here. This jacket had cuffs, and uh, the cuffs were kind of like, like the closure on the bottom of this, the band. Here, let me see if I can do this. Okay, the band right here, that's what the cuffs look like. I cut them off because I didn't want to bother with them. So, when you stitch the sleeve, you'll have to decide what you want to do. I didn't want to have to take off a cuff and open the sleeve because there's no way to embroider the sleeve without opening the uh, underarm seam. Now this one has a couple of seams that composes the sleeve here, but this is the one that goes under the arm. That's the one I opened. So you will have to open the sleeve up and um, uh, and do all your embroidery. So determine how much you want to do. Maybe you don't want to do mess with the sleeves and you just want to embellish the the jacket itself um you know you can do whatever however you want it to um and since i cut off the cuff i didn't have to deal with um putting that back together or anything and what i did was i gathered up some lace and here's the lace that i used for this this is some lace i picked up at um, the houston quilt show about two or three years ago and this guy's name, I think he has a company called Luke's Lace, Laces, L-U-C apostrophe S. And he's out of the Netherlands. And he's got these beautiful laces. And uh, so you should be able to come up with a name. I don't remember the actual, if the Luke's Laces is the name of the website. But I know Google will turn something up for you if you do a search. Um, and all I did was I, I gathered it. I actually used my gathering foot on my uh, sewing machine. and But you can do this with... So those, what I did was I met up and the up your flat. I did the want seam a little bit farther and met. And then the what flat, I did was I, uh, I determined how much together. I wanted to. And, and I just to, stitched um, it closed in a regular way. way. And then to stick out from I, And then the see the, the seam is actually. So and then I added I that much this. more. And you so may not even need to know this. this. I finished but it on the server. The point is you don't have to put it back together the way the factory had it. As long as it looks good on the outside. And then I hand stay closed in my lace part. You're good. I put them together the way. So uh, I hand stitch my legs goes together, and the easier way and then I just kind of met it up with the felt it out, and and just put the lace around where you're gonna attach it, pin it, and then just with whip stitching by hand, it doesn't take more than a few minutes to attach your lace. So that's all you did. That's all I did is just um, uh, pin it, and then just. Maybe a, a little back stitch is what I did by hand. You can do it on the sewing machine, um, however you want to do it. If you have a free arm machine, this should go around the machine. Of course, this is a size small, so everything was kind of really narrow. So uh, if it's a different style jacket, it might have roomier sleeves. And so when you pick out a jacket, keep that in mind. You know how much you want to mess with with the seams that are there. 
Uh, this is a butterfly, the back of it, with tearaway sta stabilizer. Oh no, actually, uh, okay, back up. This has to be floating because I can't hoop a sleeve this small. So I actually, when I float, I use Vylene um, water soluble stabilizer and I use the regular uh, kind for something this like this. And I hoop it like I'm hooping fabric and um, just make sure it's taut and everything and um, uh, it's gonna stay in place. And then I lightly spray it with uh, embroidery adhesive. If, if you want, you can use the tacky violin. That would work fantastic too. And so you don't have to spray it, it's already tacky. So you stretch that and make it really drum taut, put your hoops together, and then lay your project down. Now, I always either baste or pin, depending on the project, um, this one probably needs to be basted because uh, denim is a little bit tricky. It's kind of stretchy and it starts doing funky things when it starts to stitch. Um, so uh, I always advocate to um, starch, press and starch until your fabric is nice and stiff. Then when you lay your project down, you either baste it or pin it so that it stays put in your hoop. Something like a jacket like this, it's going to have a lot of drag on your hoop. So you don't want to just lay it there and hope for the best. You have got to pin it or baste it. And in this case, it's better to baste it. So um, uh, uh, you stitch it out, you remove it from the hoop, you cut away the excess. Oh, I'm sorry. <sighs> sorry about that. When you lay your project down and get ready to stitch it in this for this fabric i slide a piece of tear away under the hoop before i start the machine and that's the extra stabilizer so now when i did and i did it i do that anytime i float something i usually just slide a piece of tear away under the hoop um, for the uh, stabilization and then you just trim away the excess stabilizer when it's done. And that's what you saw here. I had a little bit of violin still left because I trimmed all the way around. But there's uh, tear away that will remain whenever I wash the jacket. So, and I haven't washed it yet. But um, uh, everything will be in place once it's washed. It will be fine. Um, the same thing with this one. Same process. I opened up the sleeve and s starched it until it's nice and stiff. And... Um, uh, used the violin, laid it down, slid a piece of tear away, stitched it, and, and then, you know, did the ruffle and finished it off. Um, now, the back design, I didn't hoop this either. I floated it on violin uh, tear away, or violin wash away stabilizer. Now, when I removed it from the hoop, it it hit me because I was so intent. There was just, you know, you have to be careful to get your placement just right. And I wanted to make sure it was in between the lines just right and nothing was gonna, you know, shift or be in the wrong place. I just was covering all my bases with placement. Completely forgot to slide my tear away under the machine after it was done stitching. And uh, then I washed away the, the bottom part of the jacket because I didn't want to cut away Vileen from around all these curly cues and you know when I digitize I usually digitize uh, designs to kind of self support themselves I mean you have to have fabric and you still have to do all the the process but this the design I do everything possible for that design to stabilize it's kind of like it has uh, stabilization built in, not just so that it doesn't um, uh, 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 lose uh, registration, not just pull compensation and all that, but just just so that it doesn't just depend on stabilizer to stay in the right place. So that's not to say you don't need stabilizer. Um, but look what happened here. This is, it turned out fine, even after I washed away the stabilizer. There's no stabilizer there. 
and uh, and I do that a lot with uh, like uh, fine linen hankies. Um, some of my hankies that I take pictures of that uh, you may have seen. Um, uh, I don't want stabilizer to show through that sheer fabric, so I just use the violin and then wash it away when it's done. And if I didn't think of those things when I'm digitizing, that design would just crumple up after the stabilizer is washed away. So that's that's just one of the things I like to build into my designs as I'm digitizing. So that's uh, the back of the design. Same thing, like I said, on the violin and you would want to probably slide a piece of tear, uh, tear away underneath. And, um, and then uh, the last design is the, oh, this is the uh, Royal French Scroll. This is the, uh, I had to write them down because I, I get confused with my own names. I have to name everything different, so I have to, have to uh, try and keep those straight and I can't remember everything. This is the uh, Royal French Cottage design and like I said this was the elegance linen moth and this is the Florida Lee seal that I thought would be cute kind of like a patch like a some kind of official patch on your left arm um, you could instead of doing sleeves you could add something to the front you could add something right here uh, maybe something on the collar um, you know you could save yourself trouble and just embellish something, put something really pretty right here and call it done. Or just put something on the back and call it done. And then I did add the ruffle on the bottom just to embellish, you know, kind of um, just go all the way with, with fun stuff. And so I just, I added uh, the ruffle to the bottom and I did make the ruffle a little bit shorter towards the front because um, after I pinned the uh, ruffle on, and tried it on just to see how it was going to hang. It looked like it was going downhill on the front, and I didn't like that. So I just went ahead and and uh, shortened the ruffle towards the front. So it kind of tapers. So my line, if this were laying flat on the table, my uh, my ruffle kind of tapers downward right here so that it lifts the front up. And then um, when I stitched it, I didn't stitch this by hand, only the cuffs. This one, I just, I pinned it in place. Now this one, I did have a much larger margin on the underside. And so I pinned it way up here out of the way of where I intended to do my stitching. And when I stitched it, because it has this band on it, I took advantage of that. And I just did a, I matched the color of the dark blue and I just, stitched in the ditch and for those of you who don't don't sew stitch in the ditch means that you just get in here really close where that seam is and when you stitch really close right in there the stitches pretty much disappear you can't even tell there's a seam there and I use that to my advantage to put the ruffle on and um, that was about it are there any questions none okay um, so let me put it on for you. I think this might be a Christmas gift for someone. I think it will fit her, so I think I'm going to use it as a Christmas gift. I originally bought it for me, but I think it's, it makes me look too short, I think. It's too much stuff for somebody five feet tall. So, but it was fun to make it. All right, so here you go. Can you see it? Now when you put on, when you designing placement on the sleeve, put on the jacket and see, oh, there is motion in me, I'm too far away from the mic. So put it on, that's what I had to do, because there's no real center of the sleeve until you put it on, you, can, you can't really tell what's going to show. So you can just look in the mirror and move your arms and you know originally I had it I had the idea I was gonna put it I, I started with centering just to see what that would look I put a chalk line but when I looked in the mirror the chalk line was more towards the inside so I realized that's not gonna work so I just I just tried different things 
you know, different emotions, make sure your design is going to show. You don't want half your design on the inside of your arm, and then, you know, it's totally hidden when you lift your arm up. So, placement for that is, there's no real rule, especially since every jacket's going to be made differently. So just try it on and see where, where you're going to want the, the placement, and just mark it with chalk, you know? And, um, and just match it up in your hoop when it's time to, to stitch. So if there are no questions, I think, let me see, make sure I've covered some of the main points. Yes. Your lace is from cottonlace.com. Oh, okay. And they are French laces. Oh, they're French laces, but Luke is from the Netherlands. Yes, that's correct. Thank you for looking that up. Um, let's see, I think I covered the main points I wanted to cover on this. Um, I don't remember if there were any other questions. Oh, and this shirt, by the way, just wanted to point out, was a gift from um, my friend Phyllis Hoffman from Classic Sewing Magazine. And uh, I just love this shirt. It's gotten cool around here. And this is like one of three long sleeve shirts I own. I need to go find some more. But uh, I just wanted to show you. She sells these on uh, ClassicSewingMagazine.com. I think that's the website. So um, just giving her a shout out. And thank you, Phyllis, for my beautiful uh, shirt. It's not a sweatshirt. It's a cotton, nice cotton shirt. So if there are no questions, we will call it a day. And I hope you learned something. I hope you've been inspired. And be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel to uh, be notified whenever we have new videos for you to view. And uh, if there are any questions, go ahead and ask them in the thread underneath this video on Facebook. And we will try our best to answer them. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And we will see you soon.